welcome to Vanity's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a white bread card pudding. This is a delicious uh, white bread card pudding and it's of course main ingredients being um, a fresh card and uh, fillets and uh, white bread. So what we're going to do is get started on the all the ingredients I'll tell you as we go. Um, I got my pot boiling there now because I wanted to get the fish put into there so what I'm going to do is show you that first and then I'll tell you the rest okay so what we're going to do I got the water already started to boil there with a lid of course I'm gonna put in um, a small onion or a medium onion I of course I like lots of onion in anything and the reason for this onion in there now in the water I want for it to boil uh, for a little bit first um, and then after we're going to add in the fish and then um, to get it'll take the flavors of the onion in there as well and because the water is already hot I'm going to add in a teaspoonful of salt I'm going to put my lid back on let that start to boil maybe for a couple of minutes and then we'll add in the fish like I was saying that this is a delicious cod pudding um, and of course it's a white cod pudding. What we're going to do next, we're going to butter about eight slices of stale bread and the reason for the stale bread, when it's put into the pudding tin, you want for it to be stale so it don't take on, like the, if it's fresh bread, it'll take on the moisture quick and then it probably will be a flop for you. So you want for it to be stale. And if you don't have stale bread on hand, check your grocery store, because they might have some in the markdown bin that has been maybe two or three days, and, uh, and that'll work perfect. But anyway, so what you're going to do, you're going to butter one side of the stale bread. So you're just going to butter one side of the bread and it doesn't matter what the size of bread is, um, you can cut it in pieces, half pieces, full pieces because with this recipe, depending on what pan you're going to be using, if you've got a pudding pan or if you've got, um, well I'm going to say a pan of choice because I'm not certain what you got, you might want to do this one in a bread pan um, and that'll be fine too but taking consideration you'll have to make sure that you'll have enough to fill that one. I'll show you what my pan looks like in a second. So I get all the bread buttered and so what I'm going to do now is show you what's next. Okay so what we're going to do next I'm going to put uh, three eggs and a tablespoonful of brown sugar into this bowl, whisk it together. The water is coming along with the, egg, uh, with the onion in there, quite nice. I want for the boil some of the juices out of that onion so it'll infuse in the cod. But before I add in the cod, we're going to put the three eggs into a bowl. So three eggs into the bowl and you're going to add in a tablespoonful of brown sugar. So you're just going to whisk this around until it's all combined. And then we're just going to put this to the side because this part is going to be um, a part of the custard that's going to be used to layer our white bread cod pudding. So now I'll show you the rest of the cod, for putting the cod in our little saucepan. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take the pot, the cover off the pot, watch the steam, and I'm going to be putting the cod fillets into the boiling water with the onion that's already in there. And this is only going to be in there for three minutes, three to four minutes, not very long. And I'm going to add in with that as well about a teaspoonful of white pepper. That ball together. Okay, so this recipe is coming along nice. So after you put your fish into the water or the cod, and if you can, if you don't have access to cod and you got access to white fish, you could use a white fish. 
uh, when it comes to a bit of a boil again, then count you two to three minutes and then your card is done. We only want it where it's going to flake apart. And we'll take that out and put it in a, a bowl. This is my pudding bowl that I'm going to be used. It's got a lid. I'm not necessarily using the lid today, but we have used uh, lids for other puddings, but this one I don't need. This one as well is going to be baked in the oven in my cast iron boiler. It's called a Dutch oven. And, but you don't necessarily have to do that as well because if you don't have one of those cast iron pots you don't have to use that. You can just put it directly in the oven gauging on the temperature that I'm going to provide you. So this is what I'm going to be using. So what we'll do next, uh, we got the eggs finished, the bread buttered, we're going to make the cream that we're going to be putting in with the egg to make the custard. So let's get started on that. We're going to be using a cup and a half of evaporated milk, but uh, all uh, evaporated milk or cream. So I'm going to pour this on in there because you can get 2% evaporated milk, but you don't want 2% because you want this to be nice and uh, creamy. You don't want to have any water base in it at all. We're going to be putting in a half a teaspoonful of salt or sea salt and a half a teaspoonful of nutmeg. So I'm going to pour that on in there and I'm going to stir it. I'm going to let this come to, or get um, warmed or just a little bit hot um, uh, for about five minutes. So keep it on each. You don't need it covered because you don't want it to boil over. So let that come to a little bit of a boil. So pretty much all I'm doing here now is babysitting the milk or the, or the cream. I'm using evaporated uh, milk. I'm just wanting for it to heat up and just enough where we're going to combine this. So that'll be about five minutes. We're going to combine the cream, nutmeg and salt in with the egg and the brown sugar. We're going to whip it really quick so that they don't cook the eggs. We want for this to be like a little bit of a, uh, a custard because this is going to be layered then. We're going to have the bread, we're going to have the, the cod, flaked cod, more bread, then some cream. So we're going to be layering like this. So I'm going to show you that as, as we go. Cod is almost ready. I got it put on the back stove. And then one, once this is done, I'm going to make a bit of a, a drawing butter is what we call it here in Newfoundland and that's uh, fried onions, um, it's got some butter and then you fry it down with flour, some salt and pepper and then water just to get it creamy. All right so let's get now uh, looking at our cod seeing if that's ready. Okay so what I'm going to do now is release my lid one more final time and I'm going to be taking the cod out of the boiling water and as you can see it's falling apart now. These cod fillets need needs to be boneless uh, and if you if you're getting cod that got bones in it you want to make sure that you got all the bones out absolutely no bones <laughs> is allowed in this meal for sure because there's no way for anyone to pick that out. Um, if you're wondering what I'm going to do with my onions, right now we won't be using these. I will use it in a, in a, in a soup or a stock that I need, but uh, because I don't need it in this dish, I only need it to flavor it. So I'm going to put this to the side, grab the cream, let's make the custard, and we'll get this moving. Okay, so this is coming along nice. I hope you're following it and I hope you're getting the just to the way this meal is going to go. Quite interesting but delicious. So I'm going to grab for my cream, nutmeg and the salt. That's all combined. It's warm and we're going to, to put it in now with our egg and our brown sugar. So anytime you're putting a hot liquid into eggs that's been beaten, you got to be pretty quick about it because you don't want for it to start to cook your eggs. So we're going to pour the cream in, whisking quite fast while we're doing it until all the cream is gone into the egg and you keep beating it like this 
for just until it's all combined. That look like this. Okay, this is coming along quite nice here now, and we got our custard done, done with a cream base. We got our bread buttered, and our cod just, I would say, just poached just for uh, two to three minutes. So what I'm doing here now is just flaking it apart, and uh, so I'm going to show you now how to layer this. So we'll get started. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here now is just oiling the pan even though i'm using butter on the bread i wanted to make sure that the pan is greased around and whatever pan you're using if you got a tin like this it'd be perfect if you got a, a some sort of a baking cake pan that's small and round like this that would be perfect so this is what we're using today so first off the bread with the butter we're going to be putting it down downwards into the pan like this and leaving no no holes in the bottom like you want to make sure you see the bread and it's snug down there okay so now you can see that the card is flaked and nice so pretty much what you're going to do here now is take the card again make sure there's no bones we don't want any bones in this pudding and if you don't have fresh card and you wanted to use salted card you could use that as well because pretty much what I did just before that is salt the cod, you know, and just to give it that flavor. Butter side down again, put it into the pot like this, and make it nice and snug, giving it like a little bed. Then what we're going to do, you're going to push down on it because you want to kind of use your fist as a little bit of a weight. We're going to pour in some custard. So you're going to pour it in just until it starts to coat just a little bit around the bread and then we're going to start layering again we're going to be putting the cod and then the bread so quick question yeah if you was using salted cod would you have to soak it before you put it in the air or absolutely you will have to soak the cod overnight and I'll provide that information as well if one want to use salted cod and then you'll have to put it on boiling a couple of times and I got a few recipes up on Bonita's kitchen that you can follow okay. uh, using salted cod. Alright so that's the layer there and now I'm going to grab for some more bread and we'll layer that. Okay so reaching for the bread, bread again, butter side down and probably put the opposite ways because you don't want no openings so if you can put it the opposite way the bread because you put the bread this way and then put it this way just to make sure that uh, when I say all gaps you don't want too many openings around because you want for this to bake together you want for it to be nice and secure and then we're going to put in the remainder of the cod now you could use more I got four pieces of cod you could use as much as you want and you could have as big as pudding as you want uh, it doesn't matter but this is just a small amount and then the final stage would be putting the butter side up so you'll put this there this piece of bread is a little smaller so the butter side up so that will brown off when it's in the oven and then you're going to take the remainder of the custard and pour over the top. So pretty much all I'm doing here now is uh, is pouring in the remainder of the custard and into the pot. Now if you're using a bowl and it's a little smaller than this and you don't need to use all of the liquid, don't be alarmed and don't put, put it in where it's going to be bubbling out over because you don't need that as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what's next. Again, I don't expect that everybody's going to run out and buy a cast iron pot. Uh, that would be crazy. This is a, a pot that my Aunt Clara gave me quite a couple of years, three years ago. I'm going to be using this one um, to bake it in. And pretty much I'm going to put a grate in the bottom because I don't want for my pudding tin to touch the bottom and then I'm going to put the pudding inside the, the Dutch oven is what it would be called and then I'm going to put the lid on that and put it into my oven but if you don't have this you could leave this air 
like that. You could put a lid, the lid for the pudding tin on top, lock it in, put it in your oven. Or you could put some foil wrap over the top and put that in. Just make sure it's snug around and put it in the oven. So that's fine. If you were just putting the tin in mm -hmm. that you got there, yeah. Should you put something in under it? Like, no, you know, no, it's it because should, it's, it's all like ba you can bake with this. Or, no, no. Okay. I mean, unless you got too much liquid inside, it may bubble up over, but you could probably put it on a cookie sheet or a pizza pan mm -hmm. or whatnot. Okay. Good question, Raymond. Thank you. Um, I'll provide any information, and certainly you can send me a message and I can talk a little bit about it as well. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what this looks like inside of this cast iron pot. So what we're going to do is take the pudding tin and put on top of that grate. So pretty much everything is snug in there. And again, Raymond had asked the question, could you put, would you put your pudding uh, pan on top of something? And certainly you could, if you think it's going to go over. You're going to have the lid on yours. If you got it in the oven, um, you could put uh, fall wrap if you don't have the proper lid. I don't need this lid there now because I'm going to be using this lid. Okay, so I'm going to be putting uh, my pudding in a 350 degree preheated oven anywhere between 40 to 60 minutes uh, depending on your oven. Like you said, if it's in a Dutch oven like this, it could be quicker. If it's out on its own, it could be longer. But how you would know, you'll see that it's a nice golden brown and the liquid is after baking. And, and everything is all together. And like you said, when mine is done, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. You're gonna be so amazed with it. So I'm gonna pull down my oven, because this is a ton weight, and I'm gonna put it on in, and then I'm gonna set my timer for 40 minutes first, and then after, I'll check it, and if I need a little bit more, I'll put it a little bit longer. So what we'll do now while we're waiting for that to bake, we'll make our drawing butter. And that's almost like a gravy, but it's white. Can and I have a oh, quick question? Quick question, there. okay. So if I was baking this, is there a way for me to test to see if it's ready cooked or like, you know, is there something? No, you don't want to, you don't want to poke into it okay. um, because again, uh, you got the cod, so you're going to have a little bit of liquid anyway with the cod in there, okay. um, even though you've boiled it and drained off most of the liquor mm -hmm. from it or most of the juice, okay. is what we're saying. But you can tell because it'll come out a golden brown, it'll be baked together, and then you're going to let it come to a little bit of a lower temperature before you put it out of that pan, and that way you'll be able to know. And like you said, I'll show you what that looks like on mine. But if it looks like it's liquid, around it it's not baked you got to keep it in there so you want to make sure it's fully baked depending on what sort of uh, container that you're going to be using what sort of a pot or um, if it's going to be a cake pan a, a pudding pan or something else like you said I'm not certain what you got available at your home but this is what I'm using here today it's an actual pudding pan so let's get going on our drawing butter thank you you're very welcome okay so we're moving right along um, our pudding is in the oven and now we're getting ready to make our drawing butter so this is a quick and simple sort of uh, method to this um, I got a medium onion and it's got to be a sharp knife I had asked a couple of months ago on one of my videos do anyone know how to cut an onion without crying and this wonderful um, I guess viewer came in and said dull 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 so he told me that my knife was dull and I'm like okay I didn't know that because I haven't been able to cut onion on this show without crying, without crying. Yeah. and I keep my knives sharp but I just sharpened it just before I cut this onion so that makes it easier to to do it and there's no tears flowing there's no tears yet so <laughs> hopefully they said because of the juice coming from the onion is what would make you cry okay. we're going to be putting in uh, two tablespoonfuls of butter or margarine 
to a quarter of a cup into your frying pan and let it melt down. So pretty much dice it off as small as you can. Have the butter nice and melted and pour the onions into the butter and start that cooking until it starts to soften. So that's pretty much all we need to do there. So what I'm doing now is letting the onions start to wilt down. Just get a little soft and tender. You don't need to have them a golden brown. This is going to be a drawing butter and a drawing butter is just mainly um, a sauce that'll go over any fish meal. If you're, if you're wanting to have salt fish and potatoes and you just want to have a little bit of a drawing butter over it, some people make it with fat pork and the fat pork fried down with some scrunchions. We've talked about that on shows. We've got many on there talking about that. But today we're just using butter, onions, we're going to be using a teaspoonful of uh, salt and pepper and about two tablespoonfuls of flour. And right now I'm waiting for the onions to start to get tender, then I'll put in the seasonings and then after that I'll put in the flour and then end it off with about a half a cup to a cup, depending on how much liquid you want. Of boiling water so I'll nook this in the microwave when we're ready to use it. So that's it so let's get this frying down. So as you can see the onions are starting to cook down nice there now I like for it to be a little bit more clear and not um, you know that way you know that it's fully cooked through. It smells absolutely amazing in here and all it is is butter eh? and, and uh, and onions. I'm going to be putting in the teaspoonful of pepper and salt. You could use whatever amount you want because this is for you. You could use a white pepper if you don't want to use a black pepper but I find that black pepper is so nice. So, But even though I use white pepper in the pudding I'm going to use black pepper in this. So I'm going to let that cook there for another little bit and then we'll add in our flour. So this is coming along lovely. It's starting to get to where I want it, you know, before I put in the flour. But before I do, I wanted to to do a big shout out to Ruby. Um, Ruby gave me this beautiful pot yesterday, teapot. She's, I guess you've seen me on other shows with a cup of tea, and she said I got the perfect pot. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I keep looking for uh, teapots. I got tons of teapots, but. I always, uh, I always like uh, when you get a little special one, one with a bird on it. I got my tea steeping in there, so I'm going to be excited to get a cup of tea from this new teapot. I just nooked my water for um, about a minute, um, so it's boiling water. So now what I'm going to do, because the onions are ready, is add in the flour. So I'm just going to sprinkle in the flour all around. I'm going to cook it off for a moment just to get all that flour starting to blend through. Just go like this, when, um, use a spatula and when you see that it's starting to cook down like this then you're going to add in your boiling water and stir it around. Okay, as you can see, this is what it looks like. You can have it a little thinner than this because when you're pouring it over the, the actual pudding, you want for it to be a little more liquid. So while we're waiting for the pudding to come out, then I'm going to add some more water to this just to bring it a little more liquid, but yet like this. And a drawer and butter is, is absolutely delicious. Um, and used over many things. So meet me back here in a little bit when our pudding is cooked and I'll show you the big reveal. Welcome back to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you once again for joining us. What I'm going to do now is reach for my cast iron pot and reveal what the pudding is going to look like. I'm excited. This pot is a ton weight. I'm sure I could be exaggerating and I probably could look it up 
but I'm sure it's at least 100 pounds. <laughs> I don't want to seem silly. Anyway, the big reveal, you guys. We're going to look at this delicious pudding. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Absolutely amazing. Okay, it's not heavy, it's just clumsy, trying to get it out. As you can see, nice golden browns toasted. And you can see that it's it, start, it, it rose up inside, so it's a little bit higher. And the biggest reveal is when we flip this bad boy out, and hopefully it's going to look as, just as good on the inside. And I'm going to show you what that's like. Okay, so I'm going to cut around the sides first before I flip it over and then I'll put the plate on top and I gradually take it because I don't want to burn. We did grease it beforehand but like you said sometimes when you grease it it's still not greased enough because it all depends on what pan you're using. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds to release from the bottom and then I'm going to reveal our beautiful pudding. pudding. <laughs> Okay, so after you, you loosen the sides a little tiny bit and then you flip it over, give it maybe four or five minutes just to let it steam out, pop out of the, the container itself. And I kept mine in there for about 60 minutes, maybe 65 minutes in the oven, baking in that cast iron pan. So again, you judge maybe when it's out and open, it may cook a little faster or it might need a little more. So I'm going to release this now from its shell. It got a little tiny bit in the bottom, but not much. And this is what you're putting, your white bread cod pudding is going to look like. Absolutely delicious. And you can cut this in slices. So I'm going to show you what it looks like a little closer. A quick question. Oh, okay. Uh, so would you let it cool before you cut it or would you cut no, no, you want to, you can cut it, you can cut it uh, while it's hot because okay. you're going to be serving it as a meal. So pretty much you're going to be serving it as your dinner. Um, if, uh, if you feel that you want it to let it cool, that's fine. But you're going to be using a hot drawer and butter over the top of it. And okay. as you can see, it's nice and steamed. So I'm going to show you now what it looks like. Food stuff. So this is what your white bread cod pudding is going to look like. Now, depending on if you're using a bread pan, a different sort of a pan, but if you got a small, narrow pudding pan, it would be perfect for this because it's just, it's just beautiful. And also, your drawing butter that's over it to the side, add in an extra cup of water, put it on a low simmer because now this is going to be poured over the top of the individual slices. This is um, a serving for four people and what I'm going to do now is cut into this and I'm going to take out a piece and show you what it looks like. Now while I'm cutting this I just want to tell you a little bit. This uh, pudding recipe is mine. Um, I, um, I just feel that when we got so much stale bread it's nice to have a little uh, a little something else to use it on besides just ordinary sweet pudding and the pan that I used was my friends friends she bore uh, lend it to me um, to do this uh, recipe because I don't have one that's that narrow the bread is a little crunchier on the bottom and this is what it looks like on the inside and I'm going to turn around my plate and let you see the inside there and the inside. Now isn't that absolutely delicious? You can see the card, you can see the layers of bread and the and uh, the custard that's baked there with the eggs. Got it all binded together. So now I'm going to put this to my plate and we're going to put a little bit of drawing butter over it. Okay, so I'm just going to put it there on the plate. So yes, I'm always looking for new recipes, stuff that you could use, your stale bread, and so much more. So what we're going to do now is just put a nice helping of the drawing butter over the top. As you see, well, a little bit over the table and a little bit over the top. <laughs> and there it is there. So that's what it's going to look like. 
as you can see it's too good to eat okay, I just want to put a little bit of extra pepper on mine of course you know I do like a little bit more pepper I'm gonna have a taste of this now um, again I hope you guys enjoyed this episode for our white bread cod pudding you know it's always nice to have extra things that you can do with you know your stale bread extra cod that you got it's gonna have a little taste mm. the stale bread is baked perfect the cod in the layers you can taste the flavors and even the onion that we we boiled the cod in and having that drawing butter there the sauce to dip it in it's absolutely delicious i hope you get to try this one Raymond, much, you're gonna have to have. Much, yeah, you're gonna have to have like taste too good eat. <laughs> Is that the expression? Mm. Too good eat. So good. Oh, okay. You can pour me up a cup of tea too. I can say two there. thumbs up by Bonita's Kitchen, but because it's my mm -hmm. recipe, that would be a little well, I'll modest. Come. But I, I, I'll say two thumbs up by Bonita's okay, Kitchen. Okay, good. There we go. So I was so excited to show you this uh, recipe today and because it had a few extra steps I want it to be as alpha and clear as possible so that you can follow these steps and I hope that you get to make it because any time that you have any such cod meals and again your, your leftover bread put together into a meal this could be a lunch time a supper time and I'm saying it's for four. You could probably serve more, but not in this house. In this house, when you got anything cod, you're lucky to get more, more than four out of this uh, pudding. But please do try. Absolutely delicious. So if this is your first time visiting Bonita's Kitchen, please subscribe to our channel because each time we post a new video, we will give you a notification letting you know. We have over 180 recipes right now posted to our channel and our website, www.bonitaskitchen.com. And if you wanna go in and visit recipes there, or you can send us a message on our Facebook page. Okay, so I just want to get myself some more tea. So, I'm glad that you joined us here today again on Bonita's Kitchen. And from our kitchen to yours, thank you for joining us. And you have a wonderful day.